Too many days in the darkness Without a glimpse of the light Open your heart and Spend this time in your head With every star Welcome to McDonald Spey Valley, up here in Aviemore in the Scottish Highlands. I mean, the scenery, as you can see, is absolutely jaw-dropping, and it is a venue that is used to holding high-level tour events. The Challenge Tour has been coming here for a decade, and a few years ago in 2013, current world number one Brooks Kepka shot to an incredible victory with a final round 62 on the Challenge Tour. John, all of the players teeing it up with us this week can take a lot of hope and heart from seeing the way he climbed the ladder. How much can they learn from a journey like that? Well, they can learn everything. I mean, look at him now. I mean, the guy is absolutely flying. I mean, he's a world beater. That's why he's number one in the world, winning majors left, right and centre. Comes here to Spey Valley, well, and shoots the lights out, shooting 62 course record. I don't think the boys will beat that course record, but if they did, well, what a, what a player to follow in the footsteps of. John, you played here when the Challenge Tour event was held. You've seen the course and how mm. it's set up this week. What kind of player is this going to suit? Oh, God. I mean, someone that really goes for broke, I think, because the course is really tight. I mean, there's a lot of golf, golf holes out there, especially like the likes of, you could say, 17, 12, uh, 8, you know, if you want to be strong and take on the corners. But finding these ferries are not easy. They're really narrow out there. The wind is up as well, and it's swirling around at the players. You know, par threes are dangerous as well. They're monsters out there. I mean, most of them might be down breeze. That might be a bit of a helping hand for the players. But, I mean, the heather is evil. I mean, it is so wiry out there. You're in it. You are hard to get out of it. And if you're around the greens and trying to be delicate, you won't be able to. The race to Desert Springs is taking shape. What do you make of the players that have got themselves in that top five so far? I think Alfie Plan has really stood alone for me, just how calm, cool and collected the man is. I mean, his experience is shining through. You know, he's had that claim to fame two years ago at the Open winning the medal. And I mean, he's just really taken it on board and he's come, come to the PGA Euro Pro Tour here and he's loving life, nice and relaxed, gets his weekends off, which he loves. Absolutely, really exciting. Now we move into the business end of the season, but currently at the top of that race to Desert Springs is Alfie plant and John went to catch up with him a little earlier this week. Hi everybody, you've seen that Alfie Plant, top of the older Amer on the race to Desert Springs here on the PGA Euro Pro Tour. He's in there, quiet as a button, probably still fast asleep, late tee off time on the second day. Let's go and see if he's still hugging that trophy. Still hugging it. Hello, Alfie. Yeah, you all right, mate? Look at you. You still got it, dude. No, I can't leave him, can I? No, you can't leave him. What have you called him? This is Tim the Trophy. Tim the Trophy. Well, do you fancy a nice little chat? Can I wake oh, you up? Go on. Open them bad boys up? Yeah, go for it. Yeah? Come on, boss man. Cup of tea? Yeah. I'm buying start from where we left off there, seeing you with your trophy in your bed. I mean, what made you come up with that idea? Uh, well, me and the missus had an argument, so I thought, <laughs> you know what? <laughs> Let's get Tim involved, see what's going to happen. <laughs> when you've done something like that as well, and you go and, you know, you win at Dudsbury in an unbelievable fashion, I mean, when you look at the tour in general on the PJ Europro Tour, do you just think, oh my God, I love this place? <sighs> it's such a great tour, you know, the exposure, how it's run, everything. I absolutely love it out here, yeah. Let's talk about the win. Right, so Marco Penge is, you know, foot's down on the floor, full throttle, yep. miles ahead of everybody else. Going into that back nine, did you think I'm playing for second? Yeah, deep down you, you do, you know. You still think, oh, is there may be a chance, there may be a chance, but I've played loads with Marco over the years and he looked really in control and, you know, he's, he's a really good player, so um, I didn't really expect to catch him all day. 
and then uh, you went on and then the scoreboard was going to ever change. You know, you were looking back and Marco obviously made the, was it a triple on, uh, yeah, on 15? it was a strange part of the round actually because he was on 15 for a lot longer than normal. So mm. I would have just finished 17 when he finished 15. Yeah. So I was kind of chasing all the way around and then on 18, all of a sudden I've gone from chasing for five hours to I had a free shot lead and it was a bit like, is the scorer got that right? Is he not? I don't know, do I believe him, do I not? Because it was just so dramatic, but um, yeah, it was just uh, and still an exciting way to finish as well. well. Let's talk about the 18th, because you've, you've driven it in the trees on the right. So your second shot, you've absolutely ripped it, got your gap that you were looking for, pitched it shy, big hard bounce, and it's gone through the green at a massive rate of knots, and it's hit that woman yeah. just shy of out of bounds. Did you know that at the time? I was in the trees saying, like, is that OK? Like, yeah. Is it out of bounds? Is it not? I, I, I didn't know how fast it was going across the green. So, um, yeah, I bought that lady a drink after to say thanks. Did you? Good <laughs> lad, man. Good lad. I mean, you're loving life, aren't you? Yeah, I am. Yeah, yeah, it's nice. At the beginning of the year, you know, you have to put down, you know, your hobbies, interests, you know, what you like to do in your spare time. You put ventriloquism. Did you do that as a laugh or do you actually do it? What is it? No, you know, uh, I did it for the crack, really. <laughs> you know, everyone probably just puts the same old cars or, I don't know, cooking or, I don't know, just normal boring stuff. So, yeah, you guys bit, which is great. Well, Alfie, have you got your puppet with you? Do you know what, John? I bought a new one this week. Have you? Yeah. Well, let's see it. OK. Me, it looks like Kit. Well, you know, it's uh, hard to find, but it does, doesn't it? It does. Come on, then, give us a little spill, mate. This is enough for me. Where's the commentators? <laughs> Did my mouth move or not? I can't follow that, but I'll try. You know, at the course where Brooks broke through, where Alf is in the moneyless ascendancy, the leader of the Eagle Orchid Scottish Masters going into the final round is a 27-year-old competing on home soil. The man in question, Daniel Young, who finds himself with a two-shot advantage over Jonathan Caldwell following rounds of 65 and 67. With me in commentary, Gary Alice and John Morgan, who can tell us all about the first test that Young and the rest will face today. Yeah, and it's a lovely swing by Young on the first hole. Up and away he goes with the long iron. I think that's the game plan today as well. At bounds down the left-hand side. Pretty short par four in modern day standards. 366 yards. Now, you can't get it over this little ridge that you see in the middle of the fairway. If you get over there, get the down so you can get pretty close to this screen and, well, give you a good chance of an eagle. If not, it's just a, a long iron and a pitching wedge. Very sociable opening tee shots from our final three ball here. They're all pretty close. It's going to be our leader, Daniel Young, to go first, though. 143 yards into the pin, just a couple of paces over that right-hand front bunker. The tricky thing here, though, you've got this big slope. It's totally blind. They'll have to walk up to the top of this slope and pick a point. But even then, there's not really a lot to go by. You've got to really trust your alignment and swing on a shot like this. Well, Gary, Young's been trusting his swing so far. On this par 71, he's put together rounds of 65, then 67. Yeah, well, he's played absolutely beautifully and uh, been very calm over these first couple of days. Um, and I think he'll keep the same tone going. That's a very good shot. Got that into 10 feet, pick the spot. Straight at it. It, it is. It's a, it, he's got an interesting rhythm, John. He's got a very slow backswing and then down and through, whips it through. Right leg straightens a little bit. Um, quite a number of Scottish players keep the weight on the left leg. Yeah, so we won that one, but yeah, very effective swing, Gary. As you see, a man, well, I like this man's attitude, go get him attitude, Jonathan Colwell from Clandy Boy, up in Northern Ireland, just outside of Young. An obvious promotion candidate, given his skill and, of course, his experience. Yeah, he's got plenty of it in abundance. Phil, this is our other playing partner. And three balls today. Yes, Andrew Oft from the USA. And they're not looking down at the ground there, wondering what went wrong, but there's not a lot wrong with that. Inside them all. We know that Brooks Kepka is a proud Floridian who had success here at Spey Valley. Aft is also from Florida, Castlebury near Orlando. 
was Marco Benz down the left hand side of the third second shot he's five under par for the tournament coming in high floaty big drive 489 yards this third hole look at that make him mince me a bit Gary Ooh, that was a fantastic shot it looks much worse from that angle but he obviously just stayed right on the edge of the fairway great second shot yeah cracker jack now topsy-turvy putt here open out for Jonathan Coldwell Keeps his feet very close together. Nice stroke. Should just fill it back a little bit. Bit of a double breaker, but just didn't quite hit it. This is Billy Hemstock, who won the Nokia Masters down at Manning's Heath last year on the Euro Pro Tour. Lovely player, Billy. He's a neat swinger. A lot of experience. Former Walker Cup player. And showing his class there. Oh, not off, Gary. Beautiful shot there. Pitched it right on his number. Tight pin position today. Now, Young, this one's got to be breaking off the right. Just right edge, I feel. What a start this would be. Birdie the first. He's tried to come in from the other direction. I think it was a pretty straight putt, all in all. I don't think I'm saying anything revelatory when I impart this. Marco Penge is going to win, and soon. Yeah, without question, Phil, some player, this boy, got a lot of game. Just hits the ball such a long way. I mean, all these guys hit it a long way, but Marco Penge is incredibly long. Well, Andrew, after, after not looking a little disgruntled with his second shot, as you could see, knocked it to there to four feet, and Julie holds the putt to start with a birdie. Billy Hemstock won this tournament at Montrose Lynx in 2016, one of his five Euro Pro Tour titles. And on the way there, he shot a 61, wielding a hot putter. Is it going to be a repeat today? Oh, uh, this is a different beast. I mean, Montrose is beautiful. You've got to ride the elements over there on the East Coast. Marco Penge, surely a winner in waiting, given recent displays, has joined Hemstock in making an agreeable start. But there's no change up top as the last group now tackle the second. Yeah, some all this one, 378 yards. And I tell you what, you want to be hitting no more than probably about 280 off the tee. Get shy of those bunkers that were on the right-hand side. It gives you a big wide target, very shallow green as well to boot. So yardage for your second is a must. It's an inviting tee shot, though. Tee slightly elevated. You can look down exactly where you're going. Beautifully followed by the cameraman. Down the left-hand side. And the heather's very beautiful, but very dangerous. And that may be where that one's gone. Yeah, I think you might be right. It's either bunker bound or in the heather, and that's not a place you want to be. Slightly overcooked it down the left. Now, this is Joe Brooks from... Hanbury Manor, par on the first, bogey on the second. He's a character, Hit Phil. Hit it. Hit it. Oh, lovely. Balancing the books, level for the day. Mind you, not such good news for the leader on the second. Young has found the left-hand fairway bunker off the tee. Caldwell just outside of it but it's actually the northern irishman who's going to have the far tougher second shot it's 109 yards into the pin but as you can see he is right on the edge here he's going to have to step back into the bunker that means choking way down the club it's going to be a little bit of guesswork as to how that's going to come out anywhere on the green from here is a really good result now this is what i love about golf the challenges Ball well above his feet, as Kit said, gripping down. You'd think it has to go left from there. But he's controlled that, held it absolutely beautifully. That's great skill. It is, Gary. Zeeman to the right edge of the green, whipping the hands over, trying to get that draw. Now, this is one up against the lip of the bunker. Better get this one up pretty high quickly. 
Sounded a little bit chunky. And that's shy of the green. That's not going to be an easy up and down with that tight pin on the left. Now, on the upslope, it's so easy to end up with just a, a bit too much sand, which we, which we saw there. Richard Mansell didn't make the best of starts to the tournament, around a 73, but he fought back superbly yesterday with a 66. Today, a couple of pars and then a drop shot on the third. But immediately, surely, it's going to be level par for the round after four. Yeah, that was a shot in there, and I'm sure you convert that. Now, Young, 10 under par, leader, coming in high, needs to land it soft. Oh, does a great job, great job, and that's no more than four or five feet. We've seen that putt from that direction from Hemstock earlier, we know that. One turns from right to left. Good action there, Gary. Yeah, neat little wrist break, good contact. As we return to Mansell, this one just from 18 inches. No bother. Richard on the march. Yes, after five bogeys in his first 12 holes, 48 hours back. Unbelievable. Now, look where he's aiming this, everyone. This one is at least three feet outside right. Should take the break now. Oh, an ounce short of pace. Hard lines there, Johnny. Yes, it's a very tough course, and uh, these hefty showers whipping through in these first couple of holes are um, adding to the excitement. <laughs> they are indeed. Trying to keep everything nice and dry. Never easy. Now, this would be some part. After finding trouble off the tee. Oh, just hit it through the break. Yeah, that's a drop shot for, for our leader. given what's up for grabs. An early mistake from the overnight leader is both understandable and not surprising. Young's slip-up sees his lead cut in half to just a single stroke from Caldwell. Is that merely a minor blip or the start of a pattern? We'll find out more when the action from majestic McDonald's Bay Valley continues in just a moment. Up here at McDonald's Spay Valley, it can get pretty breezy. Now, a man I know who is very good in the wind and going well this week is Brendan McCarroll. Brendan, when you do get to a course and that wind gets up, do you have to adapt to your game especially, or can you just do what you would normally? Uh, you definitely have to adapt slightly. Um, you can't just go, like I hit the ball quite high, so there's no point me sending the ball up into the air and letting the wind do what it wants with it. So you really are probably clubbing up maybe one or two clubs and just hitting that three quarter half shot, um, just really reducing the spin and taking the flight right down. So can you just show us please how you would set up and go about playing that little three quarter punchy shot that you've described there? Yeah, so all you do is I would move the ball back maybe an inch or two and uh, I tend to grip down a bit as well just to give me a bit more control of the club face and that. And uh, just getting here and making sure I don't sway back. So, should look a bit like this. Absolutely beautiful flight. We hear that old saying, a little bit of a cliche, but swing it easy in the breezy. How much do you live by that? Uh, yeah, definitely with wedge shots. Uh, three irons four irons you can get away with it because you're not producing as much spin but definitely with the shorter irons i would do that well, thank you very much brendan so there we go some awesome tips to help you bring down your ball flight in windy conditions use that the next time it gets a bit breezy and hopefully you'll hit some more greens in regulation good stuff and brendan's clearly been practicing what he preaches McCarroll, twice a Euro Pro Tour runner-up last year at Clevedon and Cabersham Heath, sits on the leaderboard at four under, albeit five off the pace that's being set by Daniel Young. 
and the Carroll will be hard-pressed to close the gap on the fourth. It measures 210 yards and doesn't easily yield birdies. No, it doesn't, Phil. Now, Brendan McCarroll here at the fourth, the par three. Doesn't look like there's a lot of breeze out there, Gary. This will be a good five iron out of his boots. It's a long one, this. 213 yards, and he's carried it all the way. Yeah, it was a cracking shot. There is. Every time one of these flitting showers come through, up comes the wind as we return to Young. Third tee. Ideally, take it down the right-hand side with a little bit of draw just to bring it into the middle of the fairway, which is exactly what he's done. He'll get a good look up towards the green when he gets there in a minute. Yeah, it's a good drive down there. Now, Mansell on the fifth. Cracking birdie at four. Can we repeat it here at five? Oh, it's another beautiful shot. Pin high left, no more than, well, six, seven, eight feet. Jonathan Caldwell from the left-hand side of this fairway. And just has to skirt along the edge of the trees. And he skirted a bit too close, as we can hear, clipping the trees. Now he's really short-sighted himself. That's not nice. No, he'd be hoping for a nice lie there. It's obviously a tight pin on the left. Not going to be easy. Now, Brendan McCarroll using the slope. Should break off his left. Down and away. It's tracking, gets it. What a two. So far for our leader, Young, it's been a consistent season. This is his seventh start. He's only missed one cut at Harleyford. His best, tied eighth in the Golf Catcher Championship at Dudsbury. Yeah, well, with a swing like that, you don't think anything's really going to go wrong, and that's a beautiful shot. Long, narrow green, this one. A must-find green in two. Give yourself a chance. So Richard Mansell, hoping to make a little more progress. This birdie putt from about six or seven feet, no bother at all. Yes, Mansell on the march again, but back on the third, Caldwell in trouble. Caldwell's left himself a really testy little chip shot from the left-hand side of the long third hole here. It's off of a downslope. He's only got about two paces of green to work with, and he has got the grass laying with him. It's long and wispy, but that means it's going to want to lay over the ball, and there's no way he can get clean contact on it, and he needs it for the spin. I think all he can do here is play the safe professional shot, aim to knock it 10, 12 feet past, and hope he can save his par with the putter. Interested spectators thinking, what's he going to do with this? It's nearly worked very well here. I mean, as Kit said, it was either going to go 10 feet past or you were going to try and jab it into the fringe, which is what he tried to do. Well, we've come to the beautiful par three fourth hole at Spey Valley, and what a par three it is. We're on a bit of a high plateau here, dips down away to a raised green that slopes from back to front as well, and slightly to the left and to the right round the back portion of it. Two big bunkers guarding left and right as well to boot. Wind is howling off my right-hand side and down, so I got the seven iron out, and you're thinking, my goodness, you ain't hitting that there, are you? 213 yards. I mean, if it was into the breeze, I'm talking three wood with the strength of this breeze, so seven iron, pin it at the front, just tee it high, let it fly down the right, and the wind should do the rest. Here we go. Boom. Well, I can't hit that much better. That's my personal best. Straight at it. Oh, pitch is straight over the stick. Happy days. As it's been for Gavin Hay on this fourth hole, birdies on each of his previous two attempts this week. Wow. We got through that one. Staring it down, likes it. No, he doesn't. My goodness, that's in the front right trap. That's going to be a tough up and down from there, Gary. It certainly is. High, high lip and no green. Let's have another look. Richard Mansell. Six hole. And this is another beautiful par three looking straight down there, as you can see. And Mansell's 
really got the bit between his teeth. Got that very close. Yeah, since that win now, he is absolutely flying and young. Oh, that'd have been some birdie. And this difficult third. Tap that one in for a part. Now, Gavin Hay made bogey at three. But I think he's going to salvage a par at the fourth. The man from Meehan's Castle Golf Academy. You can see where John's aiming this one. A good couple of inches outside the right. Just coming through the fringe a little bit. See what it does. Oh, it doesn't move a muscle. Fooled me, fooled him. That's a bogey. Richard Mansell, another sort of five footer, just needs to be inside the right lip, inside the right lip, inside the hole. You got it. The man is on a crest of a wave. He's playing with his good friend, Marco Bench. Yes, and he's still buzzing after winning the Cobra Puma Next Level Championship at McDonald Portal last week. He shares sixth here. Young maintains a slender lead while McCarroll's in the process of trying to tame the monster, otherwise known as the fifth, at Spey Valley. Yeah, the monster. I mean, this goes on forever and ever. Over 600 odd yards long. It's par five. Brendan there playing a nice shot and seeing this ball forever getting closer. That's a lovely shot from there. Used all the contours. I think you both made the point a little earlier on, John and Gary, that the collection of par threes here at Spey Valley are absolutely top-notch. Yeah, I feel they are. They're a really good challenge. And uh, it brings the best out of these players, because through the week we've seen some cracking shots into these par threes. One or two mistakes, John. Oh, you're definitely going to see a load of mistakes around a golf course like this. I mean, Spey Valley is... Brought with danger, commitment is a must, and uh, position accuracy is a definite must, that's for sure. Now, Neil Fennick, nice to see him. Young family is loving it, and a lovely shot to boot in there. It's really spurred him on, seeing him play some lovely golf. He's had a little break for a while. Nice to see him back. This fifth hole at maximum length, 635 yards. But we've seen seven eagles this week, and that adds to the tally of birdies, which is well over 100. So Young's long birdie putt across the green. Good line, sort of creeping its way nearer. That's going to leave a bit of work. Yeah, it will. And there, here we go, the six, 209 yards, beautiful par three again. I mean, they're relentless, these par threes, around Spey Valley. Another wide green, not much depth to this green again, so yardage is a must. Hitting your number is a must. Now, Brendan, you've got to think, this is probably no more than a six iron for him. Down the breeze. Oh, good strong swing, good strong follow through, iron it up and down. Oh, what a golf shot. Recently won the Irish PGA Challenge on another beautiful course, the O'Meara at Carton House. Yeah, Carton House is a nice venue. As Neil Fennick just tidies up that little one after his great shot in. As you say, John, he's certainly enjoying his golf and come back strongly. He has indeed. Now, Young to save his par on the fourth. He had that long putt from the back left hand side of the green. This one should just break a smidge off his left and he gets it. In the front door we go. Just what the doctor ordered. You hit the nail on the head there, Phil. Calm the nerves. Always nice to hold a couple of putts. Feel like you're getting your eye in. A hemstock for birdie. One. Nice. Slots in another. Beware the hemstock. They're all giving it a go. It's exciting stuff. Now, Carol, probably a couple of inches just on the right here, and it should swing in yeah. right yeah. now, as it does. Fantastic, isn't it? They're going in from all over the place. Yeah. 
McCarroll and Hemstock are now tied second alongside Caldwell as the lead of Young is restored to where it was overnight. Two shots, early days of course, but a home winner of the Eagle Orchid Scottish Masters would put the icing on an already sweet cake for the sponsors. It's been great to see the tour itself grow. Um, people like Tyrrell Hatton have been through the tour and talked positively of it. Past winners of the Eagle Orchid Scottish Masters have included Stuart Manley, Oliver Farr and others who've gone on to bigger and better things in golf and that's what we're really all about. That's why we like supporting the Euro Pro Tour. It's to help give uh, young folk in the nicest possible sense uh, who are chasing the dream um, setting out in life to try to help create the environment where they can do that. The tournament's been a great success and remains wide open, with Brendan McCarroll one of numerous realistic title candidates at McDonald's Bay Valley. At this time of year, taking the high road to the Cairngorms in the Scottish Highlands is a smart move. Also heavenly, from the perspective of Daniel Young, a birdie on the fifth, which pads his lead to three in the Eagle Orchid Scottish Masters. It's the perfect time for Kit to have a chat. How important was that par putt on the fourth for your momentum? Yeah, very important. Um, yeah, I would have been a, bit, a, bit, a little bit disappointed to be uh, two over through four, so it was a massive part. It was, uh, I didn't, didn't hit it in a particularly great, great spot long left with that big slope in the middle of the green, so it was a, yeah, it was a very good two-part, so more than, more than happy to keep that going. And conditions-wise, you've seen a bit of everything in the first few holes, wind, rain, sunshine, how's it playing? Yeah, it's playing fine. There's The breeze is sort of picking up, then dropping down a little bit. Um, yeah, we had a couple of heavy showers the first and the second. Um, apart from that, it's fine. It's, as long as the wind stays like this and the rain stays away, we'll be okay. Young always seems to perform well in Scotland. He had three top tens on the Euro Pro Tour last season, the best of which was tied six at Newmarket near Aberdeen. Loves being on home soil and he loves being three ahead. Yes, who wouldn't like that three shot lead? And here he is on this beautiful par three six. Hands off a bit quick there. It just looked a bit quick through the ball there. It wasn't quite a good rhythm. What's he done with it? Well, it's all right. Found the green. Not absolutely by the pin, but got the right length. He did. He did. Up and over the tee. He'll go for his first putt from distance, but he had one back at the fourth just like that. Now Mansell at the eighth. Looks like he's out with the three wood there. Trying to turn it off the trees. Is he trying to cut the corner? Oh, clips into him. Drops down just into the... Minute Heather there. That shouldn't be too much of a problem. Now Marco could overpower this one. This looks like three wood as well. Trying to bend this one round the corner from right to left. Looks like he's got it going. And he slightly overcooked it. And that could be nasty. So let's take a look at this par four, 413 yard seventh hole. The players either have the option of playing short of those two bunkers that we're just passing now, or going for a big hit, generally with a little bit of a draw off the right hand side, which then only leaves a wedge to this elevated green. This hole's really all about the tee shot though, that's the key. Definitely, I remember when I played back in 2011 on the Challenge Tour, took on a corner, didn't really come off for me. There we go. These guys looks like they've driven it miles down there, giving them the nice easy option with a wedge in hand. Now, aft was off to a flyer. Birdie on the first. Since then, four consecutive pars. And it looks like being five. Played that beautifully. Typical American shot, floating it in the air. Yeah, nice soft landing, soft hands. Now. What's this little bit of header going to do here, Gary? Is it going to affect the ball? Gouging it out, getting really steep on it. Get as much in between as you, less as you can. It's popped out nice. He, he's done well to find the green there. Yeah, that was good. This one for Marco Penge looks uh, tougher. Can't see any of the head of the club. Oof. 
and that's what it's like if you get those woody stems you, and this is Penge is a strong strong fella and that was a big hit to only move it 20 <laughs> yards <laughs> my goodness must be worn out after that no Allen cross from right to left yeah, loves yeah. it I think it's fair to say the club head will meet less resistance with this one. Yeah, just a bit. Nice crisp strike needed with that pin at the front. Get the spin required. And just slightly overcooked it for Marco. With the steam train hooting in the background. Young up and over this saddle. It's running well. It's running running very well. For you going into the train noise then, Gary. Well the put was on the right track. Oh boom boom boom. Love it, Phil. Now can he own another one? Tough order this one. This is at least 35, 40 feet away. It's tracking, it's tracking, and it's another good putt. No more than a foot and a half away for Richard. He's definitely strutting his stuff around this golf course, playing some good golf. Jonathan Coldwell then. This is his birdie attempt on the par three. Running well. Do you know, it looked as though it wiggled a bit right, and I would have always said it when he left the putter, he got that on the perfect line. Yeah, yeah, back of the ball. Oh, actually, I'll just finish. Yeah, finish, right? yeah, yeah, finish, finish. Yes, this is kind of Johnny's kind of golf course. He plays a place called the Clandy Boy, quite similar without the the heather, the strong heather that there is relentless around this golf course. As we see Marco here off the left to save par. Oh, grazes the right edge. I don't know if he thought he had that. He started walking early. Trouble for Hemstock and Colwell leaves McCarroll alone in second, albeit three adrift of Young, who now moves forward to the eighth, where he's made a birdie and a par so far this week. Well, here we come at the eighth, and it's into the breeze, playing an absolute monster, and it's a little beauty. I love this hole. 382 yards, sharp dog leg from right to left. If I rotate that, this is where you're hitting from. Coming up here, you see these trees. There's two of them just guarding the left-hand side of the fairway, but you can take it just left of that. But it is a big carry, 264 yards to carry on that line into probably what is like a three-club wind. Right, and that is ideally where you want to be, and it is a must fairway find. The green is not the biggest green in the world. You know, if you bail out to the right-hand side of those trees, you're coming in with probably like a forearm for your second shot, and you don't want that. You want to be hitting driver down that left-hand side. Make this baby as short as you possibly can. Now, just aim it at the trees and draw it off it. That's the ideal shot. Let's see if I got it. And there it is, starting at the tree, drawing off them. Oh, that's got to be money. Oh, gets the favourable bounce to the left as well. Got to be a thumbs up from the cameraman. I know it's a thumbs up from me. Good drive, John, on a hole that's playing average score 4.46, the second toughest on the course. 23 doubles here this week and 13 treble bogeys or worse. Wow, that was a duck hook and into the trees very quickly down the left hand side and that might be reload from there, and if it's not a reload, well, it'll be coming out sideways with a long third shot coming in. As we jump forward to Richard Mansell on the 10th, another absolutely cracking par three where you just have to negotiate that big fir tree on the front right. Yeah, and well, they had to play this hole just before at the ninth, and it's 333, and this does dangle the carrot. One of those risk and reward holes. That little lonesome bunker on the right can gather a few shots if you're hitting the iron off the tee for a little wedge in. If you crack one off here with driver, you bring all that heather into play, and that of bounce down the right as well, and it's a tiny green. Yeah, this is a lovely hole because players get there they have to make a decision and you've got to stick to it are you going to play as Billy Hemstock's done here put it on the fairway and pitch in over this slight hill you can see here aiming down shadow of the shadow of the fir tree is where he wants to go to leave himself a nice wedge into the green 
or do you take that decision and blast it over the top? Well, that's it. I know which one I do. I definitely go for the safer option. I'll tell you what, John, after the tee shot, that's not too bad an outcome at all. No, it's not. No, it's not. So, aft, out of the light fluffy stuff, up and over the trees, well executed. Yeah, look where Young is, this is his third now from a long way out on the downslope, just in the first cut, the wispy stuff, going to come out low and you can see his weight going with it, that pin right at the front as well, not easy to get close, and well, he's bare out to the right and that's going to be a tough up and down from there Gary. It certainly is. That's one of the risks. If you keep your weight on the left side, you can lose your balance, sort of almost a reverse pivot there, which sometimes can lead to that pull hook that we saw him have prior to that one in the bunker. Yeah. Oh, out in 33, Richard Mansell. The birdie put, how did that elude the hole? There's a subplot here, you know, because a good result today, and he might well replace Alfie Plant at the top of the race to Desert Springs. Yeah, you're definitely right there, Phil. Now, Colwell, after a strong drive, must have got driver out, took it past the trees. This is only just a flick in with a sandy, and, oh, look at that, dominates it, dances it on the green. Brendan McCarroll, nice view of him there. Another good, solid swinger. I love the crack that McCarroll gets. He strikes the ball extremely solidly. And again, pin high, reasonably flat putt for his birdie. Yeah, nothing really, you know, rattles him either, Gary. Very good player, Brendan. Now, Young in that spot of bother, out of position. This is his fourth, and it's a good fourth. And that's going to be a tapping bogey, you feel. And there we go. Weight on the left-hand side, blade well open, keeps that weight on the left-hand side constantly, drops it down. And look at that. That is textbook stuff. And if a bogey can feel good after the tee shot, we've just seen it. Oh, yeah. So, if you remember, Billy Hempstock a little while ago played to the bottom of the hill and controlled the wedge in beautifully. Look at that spinning back there. Yet another opportunity. Yeah, that was a good play from Hemstock. After, zooming yeah, in, like gets another one. The yeah, American starting to make his move. A little fist pump, you can see. Very happy with that. Now, Colwell after glorious drive and second shot. It's only rightly so you knock this one in, John. Yes, good three. That's how you do it, boys and girls. Good to see Billy Hemstock back on leaderboards. It's been subdued from him so far this season. His best tied 15th at Cumberwell Park. But surely that's going to be bettered here. Oh, we're seeing a lot of putts hold. Enjoying the greens, enjoying Spey Valley, enjoying the atmosphere. The weather's playing ball at the moment as well. It's not raining. Now, Brendan McCarroll, good temperament, this man. He hasn't hold another one, has he? Oh, right across the face of the hole there, Gary. Ooh. Yeah, just needed probably six inches more pace and it would have held its line, swung very late. Young's lead is a couple of shots from a quartet that's comprised of American Raider aft, Caldwell, Hemstock and McCarroll, who's a couple of holes in front of the leader and about to share his thoughts with Kit. Three under par, bogey free for the first 10 holes. How good a start is that for you? Yeah, it's very good. I uh, hold a lot of good uh, power putts along with obviously the birdies as well. So. No, my game feels comfortable enough, so just take every shot as it comes and see what happens. Seven under par total for you now. Are you looking at leaderboards at all? Yeah, I looked at it there. Um, I thought there would have been a couple of better scores, to be honest, but um, 
well, I'll just keep playing what, doing what I'm doing and see what happens at the end of the day. Can McCarroll and Seat Young from the lead at the Eagle Orchid Scottish Masters. We'll be back after the break. They say you don't often appreciate what's on your doorstep. So we tested that theory by taking a few relative locals sightseeing. Sean, 20 years since your uncle Paul Laurie was the last Scotsman to win a major championship. How is Scottish golf at the moment from the inside where you are? Where, where do you feel it is right now? I think Scottish golf's in a very good place just now. You know, you've got a lot of guys winning on the Challenge Tour, European Tour this year. The guys do well on the Euro Pro this week, so it's, it's great. You know, it's, it's in a good state, I would have said, yeah. It's kind of like a tight-knit family with the Scottish guys, you know, everyone knows everyone, we go out for dinner, stay together, so it's, that's great to be fair, yeah. Uh, Connor, when it comes to the practice away from things as well, I don't want to besmirch Scotland, but potentially not always the driest, warmest place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How do you find it prep-wise, especially through the winter months before the season begins? Well, the kind of last few years I've not played as well, so I've tended to try and not spend so much money over the winter and stay at home a bit. And this year I went out to play the Mina Tour, um, just because I wanted six, seven weeks of decent weather and I actually played well, so, you know, came back with a wee bit of money in my pocket and I started pretty well this year on the Euro Pro, so I think that was kind of a big part of just trying to stay sharp. Ryan, you're right up there on the order of merit this season. You've got yourself into contention two or three times. How well do you feel you've played? I've played well. I was the opposite to Connor this winter, so I didn't have a huge amount of preparation, so to do well at two of the first three or four events, I was pleasantly surprised. But I've been playing good golf since the second event of the year, so I'm just trying to give myself as many chances as possible. Time to name and shame some of you guys in the Scots game. Okay? Who, if you had one person from you boys that you would go into the pub with, which other Scottish player would you choose, Sean? Oh, it's a good question. I would, uh, I would say John Henry, actually. Everyone going yeah, for that? No, I would say Mikey Stewart, because he, uh, he buys the most rounds. Mikey's the first to the bar, so I would say... He's a good dancer like as well. Is he? Yeah, he's uh, good Mikey busts a good move. If you're looking to try and pull some girls, you wouldn't be going with Sean. No, terrible wing <laughs> <time. laughs> no, 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 just... He's not really got the bar. <laughs> <laughs> Coming from you? Yeah, yeah, right. All right, who's the worst-dressed Scotsman on tour? Oh, that's probably definitely John. Or Craig. Yeah. Aye, Craig. <laughs> I'd probably say Johnson. He's mixed the match navy and black a few times. Aye, John Henry, aye, for sure. He does, he's, he, gets, he gets stressed in the dark. Are eh? you not meant to mix navy and black? No. No, you're all right. Oh, well, I've got away with it today. <laughs> no, you're not. Definitely not. At the Eagle Orchid Scottish Masters, after a par at the ninth, Scotland's own Daniel Young enjoys a two-shot cushion at the turn. Mind you, there are plenty of potential swing holes on the back nine, not least the daunting 486-yard par 4 12th. Well, here we go, boys and girls. This is the 12th hole, probably the hardest hole on the golf course. It was final day for the boys and girls. Now, teeing it up on the left-hand side, not an option. Look how tight it looks down there, but you come over to the right where I'm teeing it up on the right side of the tee box, just got a bit more room to play with. So that little confidence in your head is a must. You know, and that gives me a little bit more confidence already on a hard hole. Now, you've got a bunker down the right-hand side. It's about 269 yards to carry it. Now, you slightly overcook it to the left-hand side. Gorse, trees, heather, all down on the left-hand side. Down the right as well, same stuff if you miss that bunker. But I'm going to take it on from start to finish. Driver out. Nice little low ball flight. Try and keep it nice and solid under the breeze. Cracking hole. No wonder this is causing carnage for the players. But hopefully it doesn't cause carnage for me. Well, there's part one done. Absolutely ripped. Right side of the fairway. Have a nice bounce. Oh, just slightly to the right, I think. Maybe into the first cut of rough. But part one is over and done with. I'm just on the right-hand side. I'm looking at my lie as well, and I think I've got a bit of a flying lie. So I've got about 210 yards to go into a breeze. Can't see the bottom of the pin. Could see it from up there. I mean, it's fraught with danger. Falls away on the left and the right. I'm going for the knuckleball. Hopefully it's a flyer, so the ball flight comes down and cuts through the wind nicely. Hopefully it doesn't balloon on me. Now this is a green finder. Come on, John, put a good one on it. Well, there is an absolute, there's the flyer I'm talking about. That has gone miles. Wow, there you go. Let's go up and find it. 
Well, I'm just to bits, boys and girls. Hitting this green in two shots is a massive bonus. You know, it's a tough cookie as it is, especially into this wind. You can see the green as well, plays a lot narrower than what it actually looks like from the, the tee. You can see it falls away on the left and the right as well. I've hit the middle of the green. I've got about 30 feet, two putts from there for a par. I am well chuffed. You hold it, mate, birdie, it's gonna feel like an eagle. Mansell on this fearsome 12th. Anything on the fairway, great stuff. And look at that, not just on the fairway, miles down there. That was an amazing tee shot. That's the best one we've seen all week. Well, breeze can't be as strong as it was when I played it, but, well, it probably is. Mansell hits it a long way. That's a great putt there. Springing his step, loving that one there at 10. So, Marco Penge. In my opinion, probably the longest hitter on this tour. Oh, this looks a bit cutty, that one. Oh, this one could disappear in those trees. Yeah, spectator rushing, he's heard it rattle around. So, back to the 10th. Another beautiful par three, big round green. You've got to pay some attention to this big pine tree on the front right, because if you go too close to that, it'll grab the ball and throw it off the green. This is a challenging hole, this par three. It is. Would you say just aim for the middle of the green, take your medicine? Yeah, I think that's it. It's just not worth trying to fade one round. Put it in the middle of the green and see if you can hole a putt. It's a favourable pin today as well for the players. After bogeys on 8, 9 and 11, Marco Penge is knocking up a cricket score on this hole, but Richard Mansell in the mayor's office. He's looking like he's making mincemeat of this 12th. Trust me, everyone at home, this is a tough hole. And that looks like he was only going in with a 9-iron. My goodness, I'm going to have to have words. Young for his second birdie of the week on the 10th. Had to stretch that lead. Never anywhere else. He's looking very calm, isn't he? He is indeed. Playing some good golf. A pinch after that wild drive. Three off the tee. This is his fifth shot. And yeah, well, that's going to be a fair double bogey. Hemstock in a spot of bother here, Gary. Yeah, this really is. Look, he's almost holding down on the steel of the shaft here. Oh, miles above his feet. Got a good contact though, you could hear a nice little click. And uh, well, he's got it on the green, and uh, you know, you can't really get miracles out of a lie like that. The miracle has to come with the putter. Yeah, such a steep slope up onto that green as well. Never easy. So you see Mansell here for what I said will feel like an eagle if this goes in. This for Birdie. It's a good stroke. Oh, and he's got it center cut. If there is such a thing, that's a birdie and a half because the average score on this hole, 4.66. The most difficult of the week, arguably the most difficult of the season. Without question, Phil, it is brutal. There's Hemstock. Anything just a bit shyer than that, Gary. He was going to roll a good 20, 20 foot, 30 foot off the green. Yeah, he certainly could, and he gave that one a run. There was quite a big swing at the end of that. It really raced across the face of the hole. Oh, this is that double bogey putt. All stems from that errant tee shot. Oh, and that's going to hurt. That's a triple bogey 12. Just adds to the, the carnage that that 12th has brought on these players this week, Phil. Yes, he was six under par, looking good, standing on the eighth tee. Now he's back to level. After that, the Penge title weight will be extended by at least one more week. But the stock of Young has risen again. He's three clear, playing the difficult 11th. 
Yeah, and we're talking difficult. 11 and 12 coming up. Probably the toughest stretch on the golf course. Now this one, that little lonesome bunker. 281 yards if you want to carry it. And if you do, it's downhill from there and will spurt the ball on miles up the fairway. And that comes to a nice big raised green way above you. Little lonesome bunker on the left. Fraught with danger around it. All that heather as well to boot. And this one, nine times out of ten, plays downwind. And I wouldn't be surprised if some of the players hit the long iron off the tee. Get them way back on the left-hand side. Take some pressure off, Gary. Yeah, I think that's definitely a, an option that's probably a, a good call as we watch Daniel Young firing one up and into the screen. As you said, John, these two are fearsome holes. Dave Thomas, the designer of this course, my uh, dad's old partner, has uh, taken this beautiful countryside and made one heck of a golf course. Oh, look at this, Lou Runner. By Richard Mansell, my goodness, that must have ran at least 120 yards along the ground. What a golf shot. That was knee eye to a grasshopper from start to finish. Our first look today at George Bloor from the beautiful Cavendish Golf Club in Buxton, Derbyshire. Beautifully followed. Slap bang in the middle of the fairway. This former England amateur international was back in 31 during a first round 66. He's a rookie pro and he wishes that he'd turned professional maybe a little earlier. We were just chatting before and you mentioned you'd actually, in hindsight, probably have turned pro a little bit earlier. Why do you think that now? Yeah, I think you, you, you learn more uh, being a pro. There's, you go through more emotions, I find. There's there's kind of a bit more pressure there when you're getting towards the end of things so you just learn things faster than as an amateur and, it, and it's very different it's, it's more lonely out here but in a in a good way because you just you're doing it for yourself this is your fourth start on the euro pro tour how have you found the standard very good it, in in a sense it surprised me really because you play at a high amateur level and it's there's a lot of good guys at the top but you come out here and i, I feel like it's even deeper um and the scoring is always well so far, it's, it's been, always been in the teens and just birdie fests out there all the time. So it's, it's good. It's good to put yourself out in there and know that you've got to play well to have a good finish. Well, this almost certainly is going to be his best ever finish on the Euro Pro Tour. Three previous starts, one cut made, tied 45th at Linden Hall. It's a good swing as well here, Phil. Here at 12. That breeze, you can tell by that flag. Playing ball, not much of it. So not into the breeze, still as a daisy, and they're able to take full advantage. And Mansell, after that wondrous second shot in, this for an eagle. Can he hold another? Oh, he can. Oh, races it a little bit by, about three foot coming back for his birdie. What are you doing? Yeah, there you go. What are you doing, Rich? But, you know, confidence is high, rush of blood, feeling the adrenaline. He's enjoying the moment. George Bloor, after that great second shot, leaving the flag in. Yes. And using it to great effect. Well done. Ooh. We wouldn't have seen many birdies on the first two rounds, uh, Gary, on this hole. No, I spent a little bit of time out there earlier in the week, and uh, you mentioned carnage. There was some carnage going on. Well, breaking off the right for Young, only a fraction now. Yeah. It's come up a little bit shy, but you walk, you you get a par on this 11th hole from what's it, 459 yards. It's a long one. Then you got the 12th as well, a monster. You go level par through those two, you're very happy, aren't you, Gary? Yeah, you've got to treat those with great respect. Plot your way. They're defending holes really rather than attacking holes. And there's your birdie from Mansell. He's on a hot streak. You have to say, together with Alfie Plant, few can argue that Richard Mansell has been the pick of the bunch in this, the first half of the Euro Pro Tour season. Despite that disappointing first round 73, could the Midlander lift back-to-back -back trophies and forge to the top of the race to Desert Springs? We'll find out in just a moment.
the panoramic landscape of the Cairngorms National Park, a venue that meanders along the banks of the River Spey. What a stunning backdrop for the Eagle Orchid Scottish Masters at Spey Valley, where Andrew Aft, Richard Mansell, Brendan McCarroll are trying to bridge the gap to the top of the leaderboard, where Daniel Young is three in front, seven holes to go. And here's Young after a cracking drive. Looks like he's out with an eight iron here, just taking it just left of the, the pin. You'd feel, hold it up there. Don't want to overcook it down the right, will feed off. And there you go, straight at it, no questions asked. Man is on fire. Very resilient as well, after drop shots at the second and eighth, really banks him back nicely. Yes, he certainly has. He's kept very cool as we have a look at Billy Hemstock from the right-hand side of this big par five, drawing the ball in, shaping it round the corner, chasing it down, chasing it on. Nicely done. You know, the top five finishes on the Order of Merit at the end of the season get promoted to the Challenge Tour next year. Just done some calculations. If Richard Mansell finishes second here, He'll already have more money up than Joe Dean had last year, and Dean finished fifth. So that's the incentive coming home. Definitely is. He's a man on a mission, just like his playing partner today, Marco Penge. They're all out there for that top five. They all want to get on the Challenge Tour. This man, Hemstock, good player, like you said, Gary. Off the right-hand side, this putt. It's for Eagle, tracking, yes. oh, and gets it. Very good. Last roll of the dice, it felt like, on his ball there. Real cool, calm and collected man, isn't he, Gary? Yeah, he is. He's known uh, Billy quite a long time, and, uh, you know, ever since he was at, at university, at Cardiff University, he was a good player then before he went into the Walker Cup. Loving that kid there, looking on, looking at Young over his putt. Bought his little pat lunch out as well, sat down, enjoying it. Oh, probably learning how it's supposed to be done, getting inspired and, oh, agonizingly close for Young. You can see it on his face. And there is a lot of inspiration on this tour. I mean, the guys, that there's some very, very pleasant people when you get the opportunity to talk to them. Some lovely fellas out there. Yeah, there are, Gary. Mansell looking for his second birdie hat trick of the round. Four, five, six. What about 12, 13? Yes, 14 as well. The chasers are making Young's life as difficult as possible. And one of those chasers hails from stateside. Andrew, you're an American overplaying on the PGA Euro Pro Tour. What do you make of the scenery and course setup we've got here at Spay Valley? Uh, it's unreal. I've honestly never played a golf course quite like this we have a little bit of this in uh tennessee in our mountain area but this is just unreal with the the views you got the woods over there and mountains over there it's it's amazing well i can concur with that i've played golf in tennessee myself and it's a, a beautiful place around the pigeon forge and gatlinburg area yeah what's his nickname again phil well i think it should be aft in four. Oh, hey, mate well you go you got him anyway and young in a spot of bother there one piece takeaway here, Gary. Fired and grip on the rock. Yeah, it's a very late set due to the sort of slowness of the takeaway. But he's let that one slide away from him a bit. Yeah, might not be a great line from over there. Now Mansell got driver out, took it over the corner, just shy of the water, the hazard. Coming out the thick stuff and, whoa. Played a cracker from there, Gary, just running off the back edge. Yeah, it was a good shot. And uh, we've all got to get used to m making sure that we call them penalty areas now, you know, John. Oh, that's true. Penalty areas, yeah. You're right, Gary. Trust me to get it wrong. A hemstock out the thick stuff. Easily turn this one over. And he has done. Oh, he got fortunate there. Didn't stay in the heather. Looks like not a bad lie either. Now, remember the lead of Young is two, but Mansell's got a birdie chance up ahead. Big old thump down into yeah, the back of the ball, but it's a very good result, running out nicely. Yeah, well done. Well, 
Is he going to hold another one for us? Mansell, eight under to get the nine under. Words is going to get around the golf course fast to Young if that one went in. Oh, shaved the right edge and playing partner saying what a good try that was. That was indeed. Tied fourth at Brockett Hall, tied eighth at Dudsbury. Joint runner up at Linden Hall, then the victory at Portal. He's there or thereabouts, it seems, every week. So, from below the level of the green on this 13th, having gone down the left hand side, our American friend dinks one up, trundles it down. Very nice. Good light. It's amazing, isn't it, John, how how long and slow the you know for, for amateur golfers he's not very far away but it's no good having a little short sharp stab at the ball you've got to just let the weight of the club swing yeah rhythm is a must gives you the touch the feel craftsmanship needed the hemstock looks like a, not a bad line the wispy stuff he's gonna come out pretty low but he's played a little gem here oh that was actually unlucky one more hop i think i was right by the hole As for Jonathan Caldwell, well, thus far today, Bergie's outnumbering birdies two against one, but this to get back to level for the round. Yeah, and yeah, don't talking. discount him just yet. No, never with Johnny. He can chuck in a load of birdies on the banks at you pretty quickly. So after the nearly delightful chip up, just on the left lip, Come on, come on. Oh, he had the line perfectly. As we so often say, it's enormously frustrating when you leave the ball an inch short. You talk about frustrations there, Gary, but let's look at the mentality of the game. You look at Hemstock, you know, he hits a bad shot. It doesn't look like it really gets him down or drags him down. It doesn't take him to the next one, does it? As we see Young here uh, holding good. that one, lovely. Yeah, you're absolutely right, John. It's... Uh, you know, everybody has their own different way of, of dealing with it. But, um, you know, there's occasionally a John McEnroe mentality, but Colin Montgomery was like that. But, you know, they seem to be able to put it aside, whereas if I got cross, I was uh, upset. <laughs> yeah. Well, we see the little leaderboard there, and this is hole 14, 422 yards. No eagles, 67 birdies. It's not an easy cookie, this one. You can get out, driver, try and rip the corner off and try and make mincemeat of it, but uh, the green is all topsy-turvy. Another small green as well to boot here at Spey Valley, and the wind is starting to get up, I feel. A birdie and a par for Young in the first couple of rounds on this hole. That seemed a little bit quick from the top, though. Yeah, you caught it earlier in the round, Gary. He, he fights that left with the driver. Yeah. You know, the, the slow, deliberate uh, backswing and then a fairly quick transition. Weight moves on to the left. The club can drop a little bit underneath the plane. And occasionally, the hands can flip. As we have a look at Andrew Aft, and he's gone. That's going well left. You can see the signals left. Oh, my goodness me. That's still in the can, Gorms? <laughs> <laughs> barely, Gary, barely. Yeah, I don't even know that was over there. That is a proper way. Now, Pinch at 16. Beautiful par three. Trying to get as much height on it as you can. So little ridge runs through the middle of this green as well, and he's got the right side of it. That's a beautiful shot. Yeah, that certainly is. It's another very big hole. Well, this is... Uh, let's hope he doesn't find an adder creeping up his trouser leg in there. He's found the golf ball, but I think he's gone left again. We certainly weren't going in the direction of the fairway. Far from it. Uh, Marco Penge and Richard Mansell's playing partner. Yes. Ryan Campbell, lovely chap. Love that banter the boys were having earlier with Kit. Right by the bridge, and that's another lovely shot. They'll be going in there with fives and four irons. But what news of Campbell's fellow countrymen on the 14th? 
Young's come down the left hand side here into the wispy rough and it's actually not as bad as it probably looks. You'll be able to get pretty decent contact on this. It doesn't look like a flyer lie to me. He's only got 106 yards but the difficulty here is the angle. That pin is tucked just three paces in from the left hand side of the green. So from the left hand side of the fairway he doesn't have much margin for error if he fires straight at it. Yes, yeah, Kit said the lie is not looking too bad. Fairly lofted club in his hand. I think he'll be going pretty much straight at it. What a shot, Gary. What a shot. Well, Kit, he done exactly what it said on the tin, like you said. Played an absolute beauty. Hempstock's second shot coming around the hill along the side of the pond here. Again, another fairly shallow green. But he's really, that's a come on, phew, a fantastic shot. Yeah, he'd have been hitting a long iron off the tee. That's why he's coming in with so much club. As we see Mansell here at 16, a beautiful par three on the left side of the green as you play it. This is a big putt across the slope over a little ridge. Bend it from left to right. Oh, that's a good putt from there. Yeah, he was probably a cricket pitch length away with that. At least 20 odd yards. Good roll. For Ryan Campbell, it was four bogeys and seven holes around the turn. Needs a boost. This would supply it. Aye, aye. Oh, well overdue. Fist pumps all round. Scottish crowds are very knowledgeable. It's always interesting if you can stand next to them. I wonder why. Oh, Henstock never online. I think that was a misread there. Gary? Yeah, I think it was. He struck it OK. Just thought it was coming in, and it wasn't. Marco Penge now. His birdie putt. Is running well, running very well. Yes, he's had his ups and downs today, but that was uh, a good one. It was. Roy Small from Richard Mansell, his playing partner. Oh, Small's all round. Let her having a good time out there. Now, Young, come on. What's he got here, Yeatsy? Well, he's got a put to be four in front, which is nailed. Cracking stuff. Looks like being a wire-to-wire -wire winner for me. And when he gets on a roll, you know this man, he can be sensational. He won the 2015 South African Amateur Championship, beating Jovan Rabula in the final, 8-6. and six. And, of course, Rabula went on to win the Amateur Championship last year. Dan, in 2016 and 2017, you played on the Alps Tour, but you switched to us on the PGA Euro Pro Tour last season. What prompted that decision? I just felt um, I'd done a bit of travelling and stuff and thought, I'll give the Euro Pro a bash. I knew a lot of, a lot of Scottish guys out here, as you'll know. Um, so I felt like it would be a bit easier on the travel schedule. Um, I actually had a couple of wins that I had to go to last year, best man and stuff. So scheduling it worked in a little better for that last year. When you came to Spey Valley, did you know the course before you got here? Yeah, I knew it quite well. I'd, I'd played it quite a few times. Uh, it was a course I felt comfortable on. I like the layout. It's, it's, I think it's a great golf course. Uh, it's a good, really good test of golf. You finished 34th on the order of merit. How did you assess that season at the end of it? Okay, out here you've got to be, got to be shooting the lights out every week to be contending, and um, I think the money's so top heavy. If you want to push up the order of merit, you've got to be sort of top top five every week. I would say, um, so that's what you're looking for. And I, ideally, obviously, the goal in each season, whatever tour you're on, but especially these development tours, is, is the top five to move on to the Challenge Tour. So after. Many trials and tribulations. Andrew After's got this one to drop two shots, and it's going to be three. Untimely, expensive. We've seen sizable leads disappear on the Euro Pro Tour already this year, but only a big finish from the likes of Mansell or Caldwell 
coupled with a late wobble, can prevent Daniel Young being on a golfing high in the Highlands. The crunch from Spey Valley and this Eagle Orchid Scottish Masters is coming up next. Orchid Scottish Masters has been the definition of scenic and looks set to supply a gratifying home turf success for Daniel Young, bang on course for a wire-to-wire -wire triumph and his maiden Euro Pro Tour title. Solid as a rock under the pressure, a final round back nine inevitably creates. Young leads by four from playing partner Jonathan Caldwell and from the hard-charging Richard Mansell, who needs a birdie-birdie finish to turn up the heat. Yeah, Mansell at 17, the par 5, down the left-hand side, off the tee. Coming in with an extremely long iron, trying to fly it all the way. And gets it onto the dance floor. Two good hits there. What about Young, though, on 15? Young's in a little bit of trouble over here on the left-hand side of the 15th fairway, out of position and in the heather. It looks like it's lying quite nicely, but he's still got 185 yards to the green, so it's going to be a pretty straight-faced club if he wants to get it all the way there. This is one that carries a fair amount of risk. Indeed, this is awkward. Ball below his feet, so potentially from there the ball could go right, but the tangly heather likely to turn the club left. So a little bit of a hit and hope. Doesn't look too worried by it. No, Sensible got it out. Up in front of the green. Chance to save his par. Yeah, it's a good shot. This stuff is like wire wall, Gary. Pin right at the back of the green. You can see it on the right-hand side, way back there, just beyond, just show that buggy you see in the distance. Coldwell coming over the bunker. Try and feed it off of that and down. And does the job. Look at that. Beautiful shot. Great camera view from there, looking down on that green. Certainly was. Wire wool, I think, more like tungsten steel wool, this stuff. <laughs> yeah, you're right there. Now, from the fringe on 17, Penge for an eagle. Oh, you beauty. I love the way he just continues to fight. He was 400 at the start, 6 under at his best, plunged back to level par, now back to 3 under, going birdie eagle on 16 and 17. No, 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 no. Yeah, that's a great effort. That's the only time he's ever going to use a wood for his third shot on a par 5. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, right there. No, still a long way, pin right at the back, loads of green to work with for Young. Oh, and he's played a beauty, and he's going to get a nice little read off of Jonathan Caldwell. He's just outside him. Uh, helping with his par putt. Well, make hay while the sun shines. Here we go. Long putt, this one. Nice. Oh, he is, Gary. <laughs> what? Uh, that's ridiculous. <laughs> There's a big swing, and it's a long way. Now, can Jonathan Caldwell, what can he do here? Can he get himself to nine? I think he can. Yes, just grabs enough of the right side. Well done. This man doesn't let up. A Euro Pro tour player there on his back. Got him for him. Mansell, he's been good from distance, Gary, so far with the long putts. He has, and this is another one. Probably 25 yards across this green, pin right on the left side. And again, from that race, that's a pretty good judgment. It is, it is. He was walking straight after it. Thought might gather a bit more speed coming down the, the first quarter of that putt. Yep. Now, as you said, Young had the chance to learn something off Caldwell. Might just try to go a little bit to the right. Uh, yeah, great. firm tap left half. Bang on. Good save. That, John, might just seal the deal. I think you're right. I, I mean, the par five is helping you. I mean, 18, you can take it down the right off the tee and 
think the toughest hole was coming up. 16 for, for Young. As we see Campbell here off the front fringe. And just that big hop from the start just took it offline. I'm sure Marco Pins is just sat at the back of the green here, just loving life after rolling that monster put in for Eagle. On the same hole, same green, Mansell trying to join Caldwell at nine under in a tie for second place. Big money puts these. Yes, Phil, they certainly are. There's, uh, as we heard earlier, it's important. You need to finish high up to accumulate as much as possible on this tour to graduate. Both Mansell and Caldwell are trying to rain on Young's parade as he walks to the 16th tee at 229 yards, the lengthiest par three at Spey Valley and a hole where in round one he made a bogey. Yeah. You know, a few years back, John Morgan made a hole in one on the 16th at Montrose when showing us that par three. Can he repeat the feat now? Where we go, 16, what a par three. I mean, it's three holes left to go. You have to come to this cookie. 231 yards, par three, fraught with dangers. Figure of eight green up there. Bit of a soft tier in the middle section down on the right hand side. Not much green to work with. The width of it is massive. Depth of it, not so much. Three bunkers guarding, one on the left, two on the short right hand side. But this green, 231 yards. Imagine this was into the breeze. I mean, it'd be like a two iron or three wood. Out your boots to try and find this putting surface. Obviously, Heather over the green as well to boot. It's downwind today. I'm aiming at the left edge. Let the wind push it towards it. Five iron in hand. Just hopefully it does the business. Tear it high and let the wind do the rest. All it needs is a half a decent swing. Come on. Go on, you little beauty. Fly. Just fly that little bit. Oh, look at that. Releases out lovely. Looks like it's pin eye. Oh, just a couple of feet away. <laughs> week after week, that man feeds my inferiority complex. John you. Still some player. Okay, lucky. Well, he's giving it the twirl. Young, he obviously likes it as well. And rightly so. Up to the back fringe. Feedback, just that little bit. That is what you call brilliant. And look at that. It's going to end up about 15 feet away now, if not 12 feet. Beautiful shot. That is what you call a match winner. Yeah, it's very, very impressive. As we jump forward, Brendan McCarroll second in the middle of the 17th fairway. This big, big par five. Can he find the green? Almost dead on line. It's been a really strong comeback from Caldwell after that slow start, but he's got a slick swinging one here through the back of the par three. He's got a couple of options. If he chips it, he can carry it further on and take out more of this slope that you see away from us. That means it will play a bit straighter. Putting, slightly safer play, but he'll have to start it way left, almost outside those two balls that you can see on the green there. It's going to be interesting to see which one he goes for. And this is a tough pin position over on that right hand side, not like the one I was playing to over on the left. But Cobo here coming with the putter through the fringe. Going to feed down from there, gather a bit more pace, but he hasn't hit it. Just skagged up that little bit in that first couple of feet. And Mansell's head just weaving its weary head just above the long grass. Pops it up nicely into clouds and comes down like a butterfly with sore feet again it just shows the variety here not a bad lie sometimes you can miss and get terrible lies good contact and he's still in there fighting away here's McCarroll on 17 looking for a neat and tidy up and down well done he was a serious contender on the front nine, but his challenge fizzled out with bogeys on 13 and most recently on 16. Yeah, well, Young, to get to 13 under, can he do it down the hill? Is it going to get there? No, it's not. Just a bit shy of pace. He's not that one in, I'm sure, for his par, and that'll be off to the 17th, a par five. Yeah, so... 
Can Richard Mansell go out in a blaze of glory? Oh, yes. <laughs> he certainly can. <laughs> boy, oh boy. This man's relentless, Gary. Look at that car. Just that one blip at the start on the third and then just a flawless round of golf. Seven under par round. 64. Yeah, he's a, a fine, fine player and a, an entertaining player to talk to. Well, Caldwell was on the walk there. He thought it was in and then... Oof. What disappointment. I had one of them not long ago. Give it the give it the Kevin Nar walked after it. Oh, oh no, ain't gone in. What a finish for Marco there, Phil. I think it tells you a lot about him, and I think that's really encouraging because he was in all kinds of disarray and then Birdie, Eagle Birdie to finish, four under. Yeah, amazing. He started four under, all topsy turvy, went back to levels. And got the four under again. And that's Ryan Campbell's tournament over at Spay Valley, and it's a, a nice finish for a level par round of golf. Brimming with confidence, Mansell has set the mark. But Young's well aware a couple of pars will get the job done. As for the 17th, he's made a birdie there in each of the first two rounds. Mind you, Gary, there is no room for complacency. No, there isn't. This is another big par five, 526 yards, out of bounds all the way down the right through those trees that we're going past. Um, I think probably being sensible, he may well lay up from here and play it as a three-shotter, but it's definitely on. Get a good drive away, long iron into this uh, kidney-shaped green and uh, a chance for an eagle. But being sensible, you've got a couple of shots. Make sure you get a five at, least, at the very worst. Yeah, the fairway here, Gary, gets so narrow down that right-hand side. And I think this is where you see these guys hitting that iron off the tee. Won't get driver out. No, John, the outer bounds comes in very, very close over there. And again, a good iron punching it forward right in the middle of the fairway. And I mean, if you were his caddy, you'd be just saying, chill out, mate, just hit iron off the tee. You won't be saying it driver, would you? No. Nope. Two shots, a couple of pars. Up for a birdie as we watch McCarroll. Has he got enough on it? Not quite. Lovely to hear the nature around this place. Just beautiful scenes we see his scorecard there, Gary. Yeah, a little bit of a good start and then a bit of a big mixed back nine. Just thinking about Jonathan Caldwell, you know, he was fifth on the Order of Merit in 2017, promoted. He's looking like he might be promoted again this year. Four top tens before this week and another classy shot. That's for Eagle. I got a, I love his style of play. Really go get him attitude. Uh, I love his golf swing as well. I just love how free flowing, powerful he is, goes at it, fearless. So you see Young here after his iron off the tee. Coming in with his third. Loads of backspin on that one. Should feed down towards the flag a little bit more. Oh, not as much as I thought it would. But played as a three-shotter, like you said, Gary. And yeah, you know, there could still be a twist in the tail here if this eagle put can be popped in. That's a super shot in from Caldwell, and he's now got about 15 feet downhill for Eagle. It's just going to want to bleed a touch from left to right, but if this goes in, he jumps into a share for second place. Well, drum roll, everybody. Here we go. We know how this breaks late on in this putt from left to right. We see Marco Penge going down there. Johnny Caldwell looks like he's on the right line. He should start bending late. Oh, it did late, but... Just a little bit too strong through the break of that later part. And, oh, agonizingly close. Dan Young up the green, just outside the right edge. Oh, and look at that curled right behind it. But you don't mind them, do you, John? A couple of inches for par. Yeah, no pressure on those. Nerves would be in tatters if it was two foot pass, three foot pass, that's for sure. 
Okay, then the final test coming up for Young. Tell us about it, John. Yeah, well, it's 18, it's 420. All the trouble is down the left, big bank on the right-hand side. You can unleash driver, take it over the bunkers, flirt with all the long grass and try to, you know, get a nice lie. And that will only leave you probably like a flick in with a wedge, sand iron to a bit of a figure of eight green. Pinto tucked over on that left-hand side as well. And no surprise to see Young just opening up the shoulders with driver down the right-hand side, playing away with all from that out-of-bounds that is down the left. Can swing nice and freely, and that is what happens. There it is, feeds out, nearly gets back out onto the fairway, and that's a big part of it done. And unless lightning strikes and Caldwell can make a two, a par here would be enough for Dan. Certainly would control the club face there. As you say, fired it down the right-hand side. What a spectacular look at those half a dozen mountains that overlook this course. Ben McDewey, second highest mountain in, in the UK, is in those half a dozen. <laughs> ben McDewey. And what a beautiful putt that is to finish off a lovely round. That lovely eagle at 13 as well to boot. Beautiful. With out of bounds all the way down the left, no surprise to see our leader Young just over in the right hand rough, but there's absolutely no trouble here whatsoever. It's lying absolutely beautifully. In fact, almost as good as on the fairway as it's just on a bearish patch. He's got 127 yards to the pin and this actually really opens it up. It's just seven paces on from the left hand side. I expect this one to come down just right though. No need to be a hero, middle of the green, two putt and get your hands on that first Euro Pro Tour trophy. Yes, one more good swing. Oh, great camera angle there. Coming out the wispy stuff like Kit said. Good light, and that is on the dance floor. Two, three putts from there. He's your champ. Slow mo here, Gary. Yep, we've seen it all time. Again, he swings it exactly the same. Kept that rhythm. Kept his swing throughout the day. And uh, kept himself calm. It's been uh, it's been a pleasure to watch. Now this long putt, just roll it down, right alongside the hole. Yeah, very tidy. Narrowly missed out on qualifying for both the Scottish Open and indeed the Open, but he's not going to miss out today. And they say the sun shines on the righteous. It's shining on the guys in the final group on 18. Definitely, Phil. Caldwell now to finish with a flourish. Birdie breaking off the left, is it? No, not as much as he thought. A win, you feel, is just round the corner for this man. Playing some great golf, really consistent. And there you go. Just an up topsy-turvy day at the office. The three bogeys, four birdies, one under par, 70. And you know what? Andrew Aft is ruining. A triple bogey on 14. The only blemish on the card. I think they'll be going to see a lot more of him as the season progresses. Yeah, definitely. I mean, that's a big, big money triple bogey, you could say. Look at it. Pretty much a flawless round apart from that 14th hole. Now, this little one young to become our champion beautifully done been a pleasure to watch they say there's no place like home John Daniel Young has proved that yeah there's no better place look at that scorecard I mean with 10 grand in his skyrocket and a nice little fist pump there of the win he's now trying to kit Dan congratulations you've just won the Eagle Orchid Scottish Masters how does that sound yeah it sounds pretty good <laughs> not gonna lie it's always, it's always nice to win, especially especially in your own country. Mm -hmm. It looked like you were nice and solid, had everything under control today. Is that how it felt? Yeah, I was pretty solid. I hit a couple of two loose tee shots. Mm -hmm. Apart from that, everything else was really tidy. Just hit it in the right spots. Mm -hmm. Gave myself decent looks um, and took a couple coming in. I knew seen it was all getting pretty bunched around the turn. Um, so I just felt like as long as I came strong back nine, a couple of birdies, and I thought I would thought it'd be hard to beat. Yeah, the back nine was really nice with those three birdies. You had a two or three shot advantage most of the way today. Were you aware of that? Not really. Like I said to you uh, before before the round, I was I was playing my own game and I knew if I could sort of break 70 or, or shoot, 
one or two under, I'd be pretty hard to catch. Mm -hmm. And now going forward, that's boosted you right up the order of merit. The race to Desert Springs standings. How much confidence does this give you going yeah. into the second half of the oh, season? Oh, massively. I mean, like I was saying to you again before, before we got going today. I mean, to get off the tour and finish the top five, you need to win. So. Mm -hmm. Um, the fact that I've done that now, it gives me a great platform for the second half of the season. Job done today. Congratulations. Cheers. Thanks very much. This impressive pillar to post success at Spey Valley has seen dynamic Daniel Young collect a first prize of £10,000 and move into one of the five oh-so-coveted Challenge Tour promotion places. In the end, his margin of victory over Mansell, a couple of shots, with Caldwell confirmed in third place, as he was at Portal last week. And all of that means at the halfway point of the Euro Pro Tour campaign, there have been significant changes in the race to Desert Springs. Alfie Plant, who was tied 16th here, is now second, leapfrogged at the top by Mansell, who's also top of the McDonald's series, with just the event at Hill Valley to count. The second half of the season starts with next week's Penta Hotels Championship at Cavisham Heath. But for now, from sensational Spey Valley, it's goodbye.